James Webb isn't out of the news yet. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're going to talk about how James Webb just got done with a test that saw it tracking a couple of exoplanets. We're almost there, folks. According to NASA, James Webb is just a few weeks away from officially beginning its first year of scientific observations, boldly observing the solar system and beyond, where no turtle has peeped before. Wait. Recently, we talked about how James Webb successfully tracked an asteroid in the main belt, and how a special team plans on using 7% of Webb's time to observe our solar backyard for ocean worlds. Ooh. And other mysteries. Ah. Seriously, watch that video when you're done here. And it's just finished tracking some distant objects, one of them an exoplanet that is very close to this science fiction author's heart. We're talking about two absolutely blistering hot super-Earths. And get this, it's thought that studying these worlds could tell us a lot about what the early forming Earth might have been like billions of years ago. One of those exoplanets is 55 Cancri E, an exoplanet I wrote about in my first novel, which never saw the light of day and never will because it's terrible. 55 Cancri E is hell. Literally. It's super hot. It's a rocky planet that sits about 40 light years from Earth. It's also 8.63 times the mass of our planet. The cool thing about this world is that it orbits a sun-like star, but it sits in an orbit that is uncomfortably close to it. For reference, Earth orbits our sun at a distance of 151.72 million kilometers. And even Mercury is about 69 nice million kilometers from the sun. At 2.2 million kilometers from the surface of a star, I'm willing to bet that it's not unlike sticking your face in a fryer. It's melt your rocky face off hot. Oh, and it probably rains lava there too. Sounds like somewhere Darth Vader would find cozy, doesn't it? It's this reason that scientists think that the surface of 55 Cancri E is probably composed of lava oceans. But since the exoplanet's discovery, the theory has always been that it was tidally locked due to its extreme proximity to its host star. But something unusual has crept up into the data from observations of the exoplanet, raising many questions about its surface that James Webb will be tasked with answering in the coming years. Real quick, before we continue, I want you all to check out my new Lovecraftian analog horror channel. Link is in the pinned comment, so check it out if you're in need of a good scare. For a planet to be tidally locked, most scientists think that the star-facing side would be far hotter than the far side of the planet. To top that off, the planet's temperature wouldn't fluctuate much at all. This is not the case with 55 Cancri E, though. And it's for this reason that Renyu Hu of NASA's JPL thinks the planet could have a thick, Venus-like atmosphere rich in oxygen and nitrogen. The other option, of course, is the possibility that the exoplanet isn't tidally locked at all and actually has something of a rotation, maybe even one similar to Earth or Mars. Once James Webb starts its first year of scientific observations, Hu and astronomers like him will train the telescope's near-cam, otherwise known as its near-infrared camera, on 55 Cancri E to answer that question. But the next exoplanet that James Webb targeted for tracking and testing was LHS 3844b. This exoplanet is about 2.25 times more massive than Earth and sits at a distance of 48 light years from us. This exoplanet does not have an atmosphere, or at least its atmosphere isn't really significant maybe on the order of something like Mars. NIRCAM will probably not work for this exoplanet, but MIRAI could, which stands for Mid-Infrared Instrument. While MIRAI probably won't be able to collect direct photographic evidence, it will be able to tell what substances comprise its surface, and it will be able to tell whether or not LHS 3844b is volcanically active by picking up gases that are typically associated with such activity. Laura Creedberg of the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy told CNET.com that it turns out that different types of rock have different spectra. You can see with your eyes that granite is lighter in color than basalt. There are similar differences in the infrared light that rocks give off. All of this is just a preview of what Webb is going to be able to do once the real mission is underway. And I'm super excited to see where it all heads. But what do you think? Do you think James Webb is going to open up a whole new level of understanding when it comes to exoplanets and the scientific mysteries they might be hiding? Let me know down below. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, super thanks, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and share this video with someone who loves space and exoplanets. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.